going on YouTube? It's your boy j 92 back with another video. Today I'm finally gonna be showing you my 2019 Mustang EcoBoost Premium. I've been meaning to do this video a long time, but I've just been too busy. And uh, finally I have some time to do it and show you guys my, my first love, my first baby. Um, I got this car back at the end of 2019 in December. Uh, I traded in my Volkswagen Jetta, which is also 2019, but I got that a year prior. And the reason why I did that was because the, <clears throat> the opportunity arose. I got this car with zero down, zero APR. And I was like, you know what? I might as well. Uh, the 2020s, they were asking for way more money. And it didn't make sense because they didn't change anything. So I was like, yeah, why not? I always wanted a Mustang. Yes, it's the four banger, but it's still a beautiful car. Um, I got it fully loaded. Uh, the only thing I don't think I have is the um, performance pack. But I got pretty much everything else. So let's dive into it and I'll show you <clears throat> everything about the car and why I'll tell you why I love it. And if I love this more than the scat or the scat more than this, uh, I'll, I'll pretty much give you my, my own personal comparison. All right, so here's the window sticker. And I'm gonna go over the options that are, are you know, are on it and aren't on it, which there aren't too many because I, like I said, this is pretty much a loaded vehicle so right off the bat you got the premier group 201a basically means i got the eight inch screen um because you can see the four pass connect and the 4g wi-fi which i never used um i mean at, at this point we have 5g ultra wideband so who cares we have the premier trim color accent group which is the blue stitching you see here um and it's all over the dash and stuff like that uh so we also have the four safe smart package with the adaptive cruise control i have the limited slip differential um, we also have the, uh, the automatic transmission shouldn't even be extra, but it is, but it's whatever. The important thing here is the 255 40 R19, uh, tires, which is basically the upgrade. You don't even get this in a, a GT. You have to still option it out. GTs come with 235s and I'm pretty sure the, the, the regular EcoBoost does too, but when you get the wheel package, you get 255s. All right. Also, the black accent group uh, outside. I have a black badge and stuff like that. Black black rims. Uh, I have a little uh, black sport out there, which is the perfect size. It's not overdoing it. And we also have uh, the black roof on top, which is a great uh, thing because it really breaks up the car, especially with the midnight gray color. So then I have the active valve exhaust, which is the best thing you can get in any Mustang, either the EcoBoost or the. Uh, 5.0. The 5.0 sounds amazing. The EcoBoost. It's a four cylinder, but for a four cylinder, it sounds really, really good. I'll be doing a sound bite of that right now. All right, and finally, we have the Bang & Olufsen sound system, the premium sound system with 12 speakers. It's basically, you have uh, 11 speakers in the car, plus a subwoofer in the back which adds some bang. So total with options, you see 7,500 in options, well, 7,600 really. And um, you know, that with the MSRP came out to 40 grand, which a lot of people say that's a lot for an EcoBoost, but again, it's it's got so many options. You know, I have the digital display and you know, the Jetta that I had, had a whole bunch of options, so it was, it was like, almost the top trim at the SEL premium was the top trim I had the SEL uh, so I, I was like you know what if I'm gonna get another car at least I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna have a, a good amount of options because I like to have my you know my conveniences and things like that but yeah that's basically uh, a look at the window sticker overall and right, then you got the MPGs and all that stuff that nobody really cares about because I mean unless you're a wimp and you're worried about gas mileage and I'm gonna tell you right now a uh, force under the turbo is not going to be better than a V8. It's going to be almost the same uh, because simply you have to work the engine more to get power out of it. Just like you have to spool up the turbos and all that stuff. Like it's it's going to be the same thing. Trust me. This car all is right, not so going right to be right off the bat, this is the interior. It's not the most luxurious interior, but you know for what you get for Ford and for the Mustang, it's definitely uh, a lot nicer than most. So. Here we have our Sync 3, it's about an 8 inch display. We have the Mustang plaque here. Other uh, versions have different um, plaques, like uh, if you get the performance, you get like the performance plaque, the GT, uh, the GT plaque. 
So here you have the Bang Mullison system. That's the upgraded stereo. Uh, I got it with the uh, blue stitching. You're gonna get that all around the interior, the doors, the seats, all that good stuff. And then I have the uh, digital display for the dash. So it gives you all kinds of options. You know, you have your cylinders, your bolters, your inlet air, things like that. Your, your lateral G's. Here are my gauges, I customized that myself. Even the colors, you can change it. Um, right now I have it in the uh, sport uh, variant for the gauges. And so what you get is uh, this little rounded thing, but if you put it back to normal, right? So I'll go to my mode. Oh, excuse me. I'll go to uh, cluster appearance, there you go. And you'll put change to drive mode and that'll do everything on its own so here you have that's normal I can put it in sport plus which will bring it back to that previous one and then I have a uh, track which is also the same as drag strip but drag strip gives you a different type of drive mode and here and that I'll talk about right now so drive modes are normal you have your my mode just customize sport plus track drag strip and then wet which will uh, pretty much change how your tire spin so that you can have a better chance of getting traction while it's wet or snowing uh, to be honest though <clears throat> it's not that great uh, two-wheel drive you can only do so much especially rear wheel drive with this much torque um, my favorite is gonna be track although drag strip mode is where you get the full power all right here you turn off the traction control right but if you hold it, and there you go, advanced track off. That means traction control is all the way off. See, if you turn it off by pressing it once, it'll uh, it'll take it off for the most part, but it'll still give uh, give some control to the computers. But if you take it all the way off, then you have full control. Then you can go into the track apps, you have an accelerator timer, it tells you how you accelerate, 0 60, 0 30, 0 100, whatever you want. Go back to it, you have your brake performance, basically showing you how fast your car can uh, slow down. You have line lock, which is pretty fun. You basically uh, you hold the OK button, right? Then you push the brake all the way down. There you go. Now with this, you have the uh, front brakes locked and the rear ones released, and then you can just do a burnout. Now, you don't have to hold anything, you just press it, but you wanna let it go, just let it go. That's it. Okay, go back to track apps menu. You have your lap timer. And then you have your start option, automatic, drag race countdown, race track countdown. Um, and that's basically when uh, you're doing your pulls. All right, now let's get back to the front here. Now for some reason, Ford decided to go with the engine prop. Like so. And there it is, you guys. That is the 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine that puts out 310 horsepower, 352 pounds of torque. And it's made it to a 10 speed automatic, which is okay, I guess. Um, but it is annoying when you're going around town and shifts gears sporadically. It's not, you know, it's not really, uh, the way it's tuned is not really uh, all that great. But when you have it in sport and you're using the paddle shifters, uh, it works quite well. It shifts quick enough, not super quick, but it's pretty good. Nothing like the ZF 8 speed that you have in the Charger or the Challenger, the M2s and up. Um, but again, it does have plenty of power when you get up and go. It's been reliable as hell. I have 31,000 miles on it. And you know, this is my first baby and I love it. I have no complaints about it. 
Now, as you can see, I got it with the blackout package and the midnight gray. So it's got a 19 inch uh, 255 width uh, wheels and tires set up. And you get the blacked out roof. You also get a blacked out Mustang logo in the front and rear, as well as this uh, nice little spoiler here. It's not too much, not overbearing. And then I did black out the tail lights because I got the active valve exhaust, quad exhaust, which I will. People have asked me since I got the scat which one do I prefer which one do I like driving more and it, it's it's uh, it's kind of a tough question to answer because you know this car handles a lot better than the scat because it's smaller lighter and you know it's the four-cylinder the, the V8 Mustang is a little heavier up front so it's a little harder to handle um, but this one being the four banger is so light on its feet and it punches above its weight. It has good power. It has 310 horsepower, four, uh, 350 foot pounds of torque. And that's plenty of get up and go, especially with the 255s uh, to, to get you going at, at, you know, I think the zero to 60 is like 4.9, something like that, which is pretty good. That's not far off of the SCAT, but you know, where V8s like the SCAT and then the GT um, Excel are top end speed. Although the SCAT does have a lot more torque so the zero to 60 time is slightly better because of that but v8s with top end and all that stuff you know anything that has a turbo is going to struggle on the highway simply because it has more torque than horsepower you're always going to get more torque than horsepower with a turbocharged engine um, because of that forced induction and naturally aspirated usually the opposite unless with the hem like with the hemis you have large displacement that's why we our hemi cars have a lot of torque you know dodge I, I think they they went that route and it's the best way you can go um whereas ford used different internals to get more horsepower and a decent amount of torque i mean at the end of the day it's a, it's a v8 but it's a 5.0 it's a much smaller uh displacement but because of the magic that they worked with that 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 engine uh the coyote ford has gotten a good amount of power out of it surprisingly which is crazy but you know because even in the camaro that's a 6.2 liter you, but again you get uh you get horse torque uh horsepower and torque that match so 455 is, is, which is a great number um but yeah uh, overall like i said the handling here is better um it's a comfortable seating position it's it, it looks small but it's spacious surprisingly for a person that uh, is as big as me i'm 511 and i'm not the skinniest person on the block also you have to consider the fact that yeah there are back seats but don't expect to use them unless you want to be uncomfortable and you have to drive somebody and if that's the case you got to make a short distance a long distance ride with somebody in the back is gonna make your life miserable and it's not easy to look out and drive and you feel like you're gonna go through the windshield the whole time you know press the personal brake lightly you're gonna feel like you're about to fly through the thing it's not good but other than that <clears throat> it's comfortable you know, you put your, I got memory settings on this stuff. You put yourself in a good position 
you got nothing to worry about. Um, so I have to say, I like the scat better. I'm not gonna lie. You know, the engine puts a smile on my face every time I hit the pedal, and it's bigger, more comfortable. Uh, I love the interior. I love the red seats. I know people laugh at the Dodge interiors, but when you got that upgraded uh, interior with the leather everywhere and the stitching, and then you got the suede with the leather as well, and that, the fact that I have it in red, um, it, it just it's, it's a more enjoyable experience but when i want to have fun cornering and stuff like that mustang all day cornering handling all that you know even, even though i have the wide body and it handles better than narrow bodies and i've seen it i've proven it for myself you know this car just it just handles better overall simply because of the size and the weight there's just, just no getting around to it the charger is a boat that is that is a fact people make fun of us all the time but it, it really is a boat and you can't get around that so the charger i prefer driving overall but that doesn't mean i don't have a ton of fun in this thing it really i mean really i really do um now i did mention the sound system before you definitely need it because i've been in a mustang without it and it it just sounds like crap the bang and olufsen system sounds really good um, it's not like an aftermarket, you, you're never gonna get that to that level, but it sounds really good, nice and clear, and you get that nice uh, bass kick from the back that you don't have with the regular system. It's just, oh man, it's crazy. Um, other than that, you know, standard features, heated and cooled seats, uh, you got the lumbar, um, you know, I don't think uh, you, you're gonna be, I mean, you shouldn't expect luxurious things like that, but you do have the the option to change your exhaust sound, um, which I'll demonstrate with the with the exhaust. And uh, you can turn off the traction control, you can put the steering wheel, you can put whatever. Um, the screen, you know, you do all that other stuff. So overall, uh, especially for an American car, it's more than adequate. It's it's good enough, it's, it's gonna get you when you need to go. The seats are comfortable, nice leather and all that stuff, nice neat bolstered. And overall, you know, it's just, it's just good. At night, you got the ambient lighting on the footwells the cup holders and the door handles. You also have illuminated door sills and they all change colored, including the door sill to whatever color you have inside for the ambient lighting. So that's also a nice touch that I didn't expect from Ford, as well as when you're walking towards the car at night, you see the horse, the Mustang logo um, projected out of, the, out of the door mirrors, which is also a nice touch that I didn't expect. And that happens as well as when you open the door. So, you know, a couple of nice things that I didn't expect from this car. I thought it wasn't going to be all that amazing. I just knew that I wanted a car that was going to be fun, and it gave me that plus more. So, all right, guys, we're going to do some quick pulls, acceleration in Houston. So, speed limits are pretty nice out here, unlike New York. Okay. Whoa. And as you can see, like I said, pl pl uh, plenty, plenty of get up and go. Plenty of get up and go, right? I'm gonna pass this right here real quick. All right, just making sure I'm at the school zone. And here we go. get into trouble in this thing and that's a normal mode i'm gonna put it in sport plus matter of fact i'm gonna put it in drag strip mode just so you guys can get an idea of what this thing can really do all right guys i got it in drag strip mode i'm gonna give it a nice little pull right here about cars like this with this 10 speed i mean yeah i like the aggressive sound when it's in traction mode but the downshift is the downfall of this car <laughs> oddly enough now if you use the paddle shifters it'll help but for the most part the only way you're gonna get a good acceleration of a drag strip mode is if you are coming from a dig let's see what i can do right here really fast just to give you an idea okay three two that <clears throat> insane it 
even uh, give me a little chirp going into second. So yeah, like I said, plenty of get up and go in this car, even for a four banger. All right, YouTube, there you have it. Uh, that's my quick review of my little baby over there. Um, you know, like I said, it was my first love. Um, the first car that I really like, really enjoyed when I got it. Um, and like I said, I enjoy driving it every day. It's my daily. That's why my charge is my weekend car. And um, yeah, man, I mean, if anybody's looking to get an EcoBoost, don't feel bad. You know, it's not gonna really hurt your feelings that bad that you didn't get the 5.0. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people try to make me feel bad for not getting the 5.0, but it is what it is. Like I said, I wanted to step up when I was ready, I did. And I'm happy I did it that way because I don't have the same exact car stepping up. I have a different car. Just like somebody going from a, a scaff to a Hellcat, you're gonna have the same car. You're just gonna have a little bit more power. That's cool, but sometimes you gotta switch it up. I like switching it up. And having both cars uh, is just amazing. It's fun. It's a little expensive, but you know, again, I told you I live comfortable, so I'm not really hurting right now. And um, yeah, man, let me know uh, which vehicle you prefer, a Mustang, whether it be a 5.0 or EcoBoost, if you're a, a Dodge guy, or if you're even a, a Chevy Camaro guy, let me know. Uh, let's discuss it in the comment section, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and until the next one.